Welcome to the November edition of North St. Paul Notes. I'm your host, Paul Anderson. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to bring you our entire show on location from Veterans Park in North St. Paul. Stay tuned, North St. Paul Notes is straight ahead. Welcome to the November edition of North St. Paul Notes. We hope this show will keep you up to date on the news and events that are of interest to the residents of North St. Paul. We're bringing you our entire show this month on location from Veterans Park. The park was dedicated in mid-August and I'm now joined by co-chairs of the park committee, uh, Dan Fisher and Carl Hurchin and then another member of our committee, Don Schroeder. So welcome, gentlemen, to the program. Glad to be here. There are a number of others on the committee. I don't know if we want to mention their names or not. Do you, can you take care of that, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> well, th that's why this list is in oh, my okay. hand, yeah. There's, uh, we've got approximately 12 members of this committee, and John Baker, our legal advocate, Joe Zakruski, with us forever, but now has moved down to Savannah, Georgia. Terry Furlong, City Parks Administrator, uh, couldn't be here today because he's having a grandson born. Oh, okay. Uh, Steve Knutson, the designer from DSGW. Uh, Dave Andron, who is our construction manager. Um, Brian Buskins and David Wilkinson from the JROTC up at North High. They're both on duty right now with their with their uh, students, and Tom Trost, who was the treasurer of our committee. And then, of course, uh, the four of us. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks, Dan. It's kind of hard to believe that this whole project is completed now. Maybe some of you are feeling the same way. It's been a project that lasted probably, was it four years? Or four to five. Yes. Four to five yep. years. Um, and it hasn't been without a certain amount of struggle. So <laughs> I think Dan probably carried the brunt of it, yep. but uh, Carl was in on all of that too, or a lot of that. And uh, so it's, it's good to have it over with. And I think uh, uh, we can talk about a few of the items that, that came up during the whole campaign. Uh, I, I said that the park is completed, but I guess that isn't exactly true. Uh, you probably know what I'm talking about because there are other things that will be added. Oh yeah, we've got another 3,000. 300 bricks that have been purchased. Okay. And, in and the that's, short, that's this year and yeah. they will go in when? Spring. They'll go in the spring. Okay. Of 2016. Right. Okay. But I'm amazed and I thank the people at 565 that bought the bricks the first time, have enough confidence in us, we're going to get it in. Right. And you can't go by this park. Every day you'll see somebody here. It's really unique, nice, you know. And we get calls on certain things that we come up, but I mean, we'll, we'll get it corrected. You know, we're just sure. local yokels getting it done. So. Volunteers. Yep, volunteers. volunteers. Yeah, well, it's, it's been a great experience, and I can speak, speak for myself that uh, I didn't realize what we were getting into, and I... I guess you guys feel the same way, especially Dan and Carl and those who are more heavily involved. So that's probably the thing volunteers don't know want to want to yeah. know about is what's ahead of you. You go in blind, but this is a great success. And had we known all the things, we might have thought twice. Right. But ignorance was bliss. Right. So <laughs> did you have to struggle initially to get? volunteers to come on board 
Terry was the one that got all the volunteers. Yeah. Terry Furlong. Yeah. Terry, Terry City Council, he was the one that right. kind of sparked it. I'm not sure I buy his excuse for not being here today, but I'm not sure what he has to be there for. First grandchild, pretty important. <laughs> it's been a, quite an experience, and I think all of you would agree to that. Then. Uh, Don, can you think of anything that was a highlight for you as far as the, the whole oh, program was concerned? There, there's several things. I think working with the people that volunteered their time and energy to put this together, going up to uh, St. Cloud and Paul Anderson talking about the great bakery that they had up there <laughs> and not even willing to buy us donuts, I think was, was uh, pretty great. But basically... We did get donuts for ourselves. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess the biggest thing is working together with a fine group of people, and not all, not all of them were veterans. Um, so uh, this has just been a wonderful experience for me, sure. working with people. Sure. Carl, what do you have any thoughts on that, uh, highlights that... You no, I was hoping he'd bring up his church members. I mean, we got church members over there for the Presbyterian Church. I'm trying to outnumber them with our Lutheran Church, but we're not going to make it. But he's he's got 40 plus, and he tells me he's got how many more coming? Uh, probably eight. eight. Eight more. Just in that one group right up there. So that's okay. kind of really a neat precedent. So. Yeah, right. Well, that took some promotion on, on Don's part over at the Pres Presbyterian Church. Um, I don't know. I didn't know that Presbyterians were that willing to give up their money. <laughs> Dad, what about you? What, what would be, you've probably had plenty of highlights. Well, I, the four years of fundraising really surprised me that, that we could have all these people come forward and fund this and, and then the help of Senator Wigger and Representative uh, um, uh, Lily that they came to bat for us and we went down to the state and we they helped us out get public funding right. for the other mm -hmm. portion so we met the bonding requirements and we came out of this whole thing not owing a penny matter of fact we're in the black to continue to do the improvements that we're doing here right so mm -hmm. everything came through um, beyond our expectations and every comment that the public has stated has all been super positive uh, it yeah. makes you feel good that you did the effort sure. Sure. well before this project started this area was just a a small triangle of land that was left after the uh, construction of the highway and uh, so it, it uh, definitely added to the city but we did have tremendous cooperation from the city can you talk about that a little bit too you know, the first time we went to the city proposing this, we were actually tabled, which was, was hard to take, but actually was a good thing because you can bring it back up. And basically, that's what happened. We brought it back up again. Sure. And so with an, the intent of the workers and, like, say, Terry sitting behind her, he was a big factor of getting this on sure. board, starting it off again. So. Anything to add to that? Well, the city yeah. also... Uh, did a uh, proclamation when we started this and we held up our plans and mm -hmm. showed our pictures and proposals and they went to bat and did a proclamation yeah. and so yeah. we showed up at City Hall and then we gave them regular updates on every six months mm -hmm. of where we're going how we're doing and they just continued to give us a thumbs up which was really encouraging there wasn't anything discouraging about interaction with the city or the public or mm -hmm. um, any of it so it was satisfying all the sure. way around sure one of the questions i get occasionally and maybe some of you get the same question why do we call it why don't we call it a memorial uh, i know there's some reasons for that do can you say what that is rather than a memorial park it's a just calling it veterans park well, from what I had understood, and, and actually the name came from Brian Busgens, one of the ROTC, when we had our first meetings, he mm -hmm. said he would like to see it as Veterans Park. The memorial's within Veterans Park. Okay. This is the memorial, all the teaching stations and the bricks and the, uh, the uh, 
greeter we call it. It's the, the, the monument that greets everybody. This is the memorial, but it's within Veterans Park. Sure. To keep it like Cannon Park or Central Park, the history like that, that didn't have memorial in any one of right. those. One of the questions I get is, do you have to be deceased to get in here? Well, my brick is right over here. I'm not deceased. <laughs> so, I, I mean, it's for all living veterans. And, and they don't, you know, we have four or five of them over there. Uh, one was from Texas. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we get them far away from uh, Illinois, Chicago, California. It's just nice to see hometown. Yeah. So it's nice. Uh, generally, the, the people who have bricks here are people who are from North St. Paul and the Correct. surrounding right. area. Or have, right. yes. Or some connection. Or have, yes. Or yep. former residents, maybe. Correct. But that does that's not necessarily a requirement. Right. So, um, what was another question that came up was the question of uh, the cannon. Some people thought that that should come back here. Don't that ask history. me. No, no. <laughs> We're all going like this. <laughs> no. I, thought, no. I thought these folks had all the answers. No. no. <laughs> well, maybe I can give a thought to that. Uh, from what I understood, some people were against having a cannon here because it's a weapon, and they didn't feel that a weapon in this place was necessarily appropriate. Is that legitimate? Well, the last or? time they had it here, it was aiming at our poor snowman. I know. So, I mean, <laughs> so that didn't help either. There may have been good reasons for yeah. that, however. Yeah. <laughs> Sometime in the very beginning of all this, with the cannon being located down to the Legion, right. in front of that, you know, the Legion, that's that's by them. That's almost a, you know, entryway into the Legion is the cannon, and I don't think they were really happy to think it was going to get moved. And yeah. So we never pushed the yeah. issue, yeah. and you know, we kept it more to honor the names and the experiences than a gun. Right. Okay. Yeah, traditionally that cannon was in the park for, well, since the 30s, maybe into the 20s, so it was uh, something that people always expected to see here, I suppose, and, and so it seems strange not to have it here, I suppose, for some people, which I can understand. So, um, what about the features of the park? Can you talk about the different areas and what they, we can't really see them all from he, this point, but we, we may be able to get some pictures. Don has a picture here. Is that it's something it's we can It's strange get? that you ask. Yes. Don <laughs> has a picture here. Okay, so they can focus on that. But maybe, Dan, you can point out the features on, on this illustration. Well, the design was enhanced and developed by DSGW Architect. Okay. And what we wanted to feature was the star is always a central thing, but Minnesota is a North Star state, surrounded by a field of blue, meaning freedom. And the stripes are, of course, the sacrifice of our veterans. And it looks like it's taken from the American flag. Right. Uh, the surrounding area is a uh, history path, and it details the history of North St. Paul's involvement in all the major conflicts, starting with the Civil War, all the way around to Afghanistan and and um, other conflicts. At the front of the memorial back here is a statue of a local veteran who was lost in Afghanistan to represent all veterans. And his uh, image, it's a real image, it's a real veteran. And he Dick tells us to look up at the wall, look at the flags, and the names of 33 uh, North St. Paul veterans who paid the ultimate price from World War I to Afghanistan. Right. So the features are thought-provoking. People stop and read. And Carl can attest to this. If you're standing there looking at one, somebody's going to come over and tell you about his uncle. Yeah, yeah. right. And they're going to tell stories. <laughs> yeah. I did that when we came in because I showed Joel our uh, our uh, family's uh, bricks, so, <laughs> so I had to give some of that history. <laughs> but, but you're guaranteed a hundred years, all we're going to be there. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. You know, 
Carl didn't like him being right there. I mean, Paul, because he thought we were going to walk well, on him so did. much we're going to wear him off. I know they were going to wear down my family, and I didn't, didn't think that was quite fair. Uh, I think the placement over there right in the pathway was deliberate. Ideal. It was deliberate. No comment. <laughs> you had mentioned before something about uh, DSGW yep. firm, uh, the architectural firm, and, and, uh, and who... Uh, was uh, actually Steve Knudsen was was the designer. Represented. He was a designer, right? And he contributed a great deal to, and the firm contributed a great deal to this project. Too. Weren't they involved in the first go round? The S first time. Uh, Steve's boss was when we sat at City Randy. Hall. Randy was there, and there must have been 15 individuals all wanting their own this and that for a park. And he just Randy got up and he controlled the meeting. He just said, "What do you want?" What do you want? What do you want? Wrote it down, stuff like that. So it was really, it started with him. Okay. So when we got the proposal to start it, I went up to Randy, I think with you, and we said, you know, we'd like you to be part of this. Okay. And so uh, basically, he was up in the old Kindles building, or that's where yep. he is now, right. was. Yeah. And he volunteered the time in it. So I mean, it, it was dedication for him, really. Right. You know, and we owe yep. a lot to him, really. Yeah. yeah. Because that was all pro bono. Yep. Hours, thousands of hours. Oh, if, if we took and calculated, I don't know what this means, but the legal help, the construction help, the design help, the physical manual labor that fellas yeah. came in and helped us put these bricks in or organize them, it, it, it's priceless. Sure. Like that commercial, it's priceless. Right. Uh, since we mentioned some, we should probably mention some of the other major donors or businesses that, that contributed in, in North St. Paul. I know that it's dangerous to do that because you're li likely to forget somebody. <laughs> yeah. but, but you know, interesting story, sorry, Paul, but an interesting story was uh, Larson Construction. Right. You know, he, he gratis and said that he'd gladly pro bono, okay? Mm -hmm. So when it come time to find them, there was no, no answer on the phone, no in his house. We were, we were, we were struck, we were, you know, he was on vacation. We didn't know that. <laughs> so it was kind of unique, but you know, we started two weeks late, but that's fine, we made it. But yeah. that was a little thing with, but just with his all, I think he got into more than he wanted. Sure. It was, it was a big project for him. Sure. And it was, we're very gra gratis for that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we didn't have a general <clears throat> contractor. We were kind of the contractors ourselves, right. which was good and bad. Yep. You know, we saved some bucks on things and, and bumbled our way through other things. But you know, we got it done, and it was um, it was a good experience. And nobody got hurt. Nobody cost nothing. So yeah. it, you know, we didn't hurt anybody. Yeah. And I think to carry that further, the city of North St. Paul did a lot. Did a lot for us. Yeah. Uh, uh, public works and so forth like this and Scott Dudek. I mean these these people went beyond what probably they needed to do for us right. but they saw what this was going to be and they really took a lot of pride in it. We had people come aboard like our publicist over there Lori Conley. Con Hi Lori. Canley. <laughs> Canley. She took it on to organize, help organize the opening ceremony the publications updated all these publications and it was that kind of volunteer work that just built the right. snowball effect. Yeah. Any other firms that uh, really stepped in, Shifsky. stepped up and... Shifsky. Um, Shifsky. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, you could go right around WebWolf, our website. Right. Okay. Pro Bono. Everything on there. Best website. Uh, Sandy Fabio standing right over there. Her and her husband Bruce did a super job advertising and getting the word out. And that's and these are these uh, paver applications are on the website, so you can download them for a hundred dollars to get a brick in the path. And you can go all the way around and see the firms that are mentioned on the pavers um, who donated money. Mm -hmm to help us because they support the veterans and they're, you know, they hire veterans too. Right. They hire the veterans. So that's important and, and veterans are in their companies, so. Right. I think Terry and Dan Furlong with their sale 
of uh, they buy a barrel every year and they donate the proceeds from that to the Oakdale Veterans Memorial and the North St. Paul Veterans Memorial. Mm -hmm. So that, that's very kind of them. You said it's a barrel, but a barrel of what? A bourbon. The, oh. the best. It's <laughs> good. I didn't think you wanted to mention that. But. <laughs> and then there's another one that we would have never figured right up there at school, North High. For three years they had Veterans Night, Veterans Appreciation Night. So they'd have a big thing down on the 50 yard line and veterans would come out and they donated the money for the park. Uh, $900 one time, uh, $1,000 another time, and so the kids all went to bat. You wouldn't expect that. Yeah. So they were, I know they were very willing to, to have you take part in whatever they were doing, sure. football yeah. games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, they got a good staff up there with right. Brian and David. And I think one of the things that we can't forget either is when we broke ground on this uh, Veterans Day 2013. <coughs> 11. <laughs> 13, yeah. 13. 13. As cold as it was, and we had probably 200 to 300 people out here freezing. It's cold. And they really wanted to see this go. And then when we dedicated it, <laughs> it was like 90 degrees and we had 1,200 people out here. In so the, this is... In, in the full sun. In the full, full sun. sun. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, ironic how the, dedic or the, the groundbreaking and the, and, the, uh, and the dedication of the uh, final public event yep. was... And then it was literally out of the blue, Scott Dudick, who is Mr. Go-To for everything in our estimation. Yes. Yeah. He, you, you, you ask, it's there. He comes up with a flyover. We didn't know that until the day before the grand opening. And he says, I got the flyover. Huh. And four airplanes, World War II vintage airplanes, come out of the east right at 11 o'clock, yeah. zoomed over one way, the other way, and came back and did a missing man. We had no idea until the day before that that was going to happen. Sorry. How great was that? Yeah. And the, and the audience and people loved it. Yep. Yeah, that was that was impressive. <laughs> it was. It's always impressive to have those planes fly over anyway, yeah. but then yeah. to have four of them in formation yeah. was quite a treat. Well, um, are there, we don't have too much time left, but are there any other highlights or any other things that you fellas wanted to mention? I'd like to say the scary part, when we're getting down to the last days, three people are putting in the sod. It's like a day to go, you got three people putting in the sod. I mean, it was scary. I thought, will it get done or will it not? Yeah. And it was kind of soggy, keep off the grass, but you look at it now, it all turned out beautiful. It's all beautiful. And yeah. Thanks to North St. Paul taking care of it. It's beautiful. And, it's beautiful. And, and what about guarantees that it's going to continue looking this way? Well, we took that into consideration and we, we did put up a security camera. Yeah. Because right. we wanted to make sure that there's no hiccups. This is all valuable uh, granite and materials, and we put it up and worked hard, and so we put that up to make sure it's safeguarded. Mm -hmm. uh, did the best work on concrete and coatings that we could do, and um, a world-renowned granite company did the best. They all helped us out, so we look for the future to... I I was going to mention that too. Up at Cold Spring, mm -hmm. we had a couple of uh, opportunities to go up there, not just for the bakery, but for <laughs> for uh, uh, well to see what was happening and also to to see that it was happening in the right way. And and uh, I was personally, I was really impressed with that experience. It's great. I plan. didn't realize we had a company like that. And, and people may not realize it, but this, as I understand it, this granite that we have behind us on the memorial is the same granite that's on the Vietnam Memorial in it's Washington? It's on the Korean Memorial. Korean War Memorial. Yeah, that's Korean right. Memorial. Yeah. And then down at the state capitol, some of the monuments that are down there in black granite. Okay. It was mined in Minnesota, so it's a right. Minnesota Sorry. product. Right, okay. Yeah, it's a, it's all around uh, an impressive uh, I'd say on your, on your part, Paul, though, even the World War I plaque I mean, to have that redone yeah. and yeah. have it supported now, that's, that's, right. that's, that's classy, really yeah, it is. Was, Very it was nice. nice. 
that was a nice finish. Yes, yes, he did. Because Paul made sure that we took that plaque, which has been all over the place, and put it here so it's kind of like something old, something new. Right. Yeah, and that's how this one turned out. Right. And then one other thing is that we, we do have a Civil War veteran pla uh, brick here, and that's for yeah. Henry Castle, oh. Oh. the yep. founder of North St. Paul. Nice. Yep. He's so, right down there. So that's another interesting aspect of yeah. all of that. Well, we are actually out of time, but one one other thing I wanted to mention just quickly, uh, these brochures are available now. Where can they get them? They're down at City Hall, and they're at the veterans organizations like the Legion and the VFW, and if, if you have a paver application, you can bring it into City Hall. There'll be a deposit box. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to mention also that on November 11th, uh, Veterans Day, There'll be a function here. Some of the guys from the committee are going to pitch a tent, have hot coffee, and the VFW coffee. is going to fire a volley at 11 o'clock. And then the Journey of Misfits, Angela Strong, is she's standing over there with Lori. She's organized a parachute drop that's going to happen right over here, right? And the city's all OK with it. OK, some former Navy SEAL skydivers are gonna jump out of the sky, perfectly good we're airplane, good at Caroline, right? yeah. Yeah. and they're yep. gonna drop through the sky and they're gonna land over there on the other side of the field, right around 11 o'clock. So if you find a way to make it here, at least they'll have hot coffee from us. Yeah, yeah no donuts maybe from Paul, Co but hot cookies. coffee. Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll never hear the other <laughs> Well, thanks, fellas. It's been a pleasure having you here. And I think uh, I think a lot of people uh, are are appreciative of the of all the effort that you put in on this project. So we're out of time on this month's show. Uh, we've been talking to Dan Fisher and Carl Hurchin and Don Schroeder. I'm Paul Anderson, speaking for the everyone at the City of North St. Paul. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>